Hello, this is a response to Steve Ellington who made a YouTube video about half wavelength antenna and various different things to do with the feed line and measurements of current on that feed line. Uh, of all the models with the feed line, I believe I have the best model right here. Uh, it's basically the feed line goes, this, this layout is based on what he said he had, which is a 10 meter antenna, half wavelength and fed, eight feet above the ground, uh, and then there is a feed line going out and then down. Uh, that is the what he showed, so that is what I'm using here. Uh, this is the best case scenario. Uh, his, his antenna was real close to this. I did adjust the feed line length slightly to get to this point. Um, I made two points in my response, which is feed line length can, can change the amount of current actually on the feed line. Um, in the case that we're talking common mode currents. Uh, that's what I'm going to cover first. The feed point is the circle which marks the end of the antenna itself. Anything to the left of the circle is feed line. Anything to the right of the circle is the antenna. Uh, again, best case scenario, I'm getting 1,010 milliamps on the antenna and 310 milliamps on the feed line. All of these numbers are taken from the data files of the software. That's how I could go in and get such accurate results. I actually went in and looked at the data files. Um, <clears throat> So this is the baseline for the, for the feed line. It's the best result that I could get. Now I'm going to show you the worst results. And here's the worst results. Um, we can see, looking at the information, the, on the antenna there's now 798 milliamps, down from 1,010 milliamps. That's on the antenna portion itself. Uh, so there's less current flowing here, because it's being, it's just actually flowing over here on the feed line. The feed line is up from 310 milliamps to 479 milliamp peak. Uh, and we can see, whereas before, with this color chart on the side, where everything was from dark blue to light blue, we actually get all the way up into the orange, where we're starting to get orange in the middle, is for peak current. So instead of lim being limited down here, we're going way up here on this chart. Again, best case scenario compared to worst, worst case scenario. So how long your feed line is can make a difference on, on the, the, the amount of common mode currents that you have. Uh, the other point that I was talking about is the choke. Uh, he put his choke at the feed point, And I made the statement something along the lines of, that is not the place, best place for a choke with this antenna. And that is what I'm going to show next. Um, this is the base model that I used for all of the models after this. I'm going to show you with a choke at the feed point next. <clears throat> In this case, we can see we're doing better. Um, that's this model here. That 8,000 in parentheses is the amount of impedance I put in that choke. It's an 8,000 ohm feed point choke. The reason I chose that is because with the properly wound air choke, or as some people mistakenly call ugly ballon, you, uh, you can get 8,000 ohms of impedance. Uh, so that's why I chose that, that amount. As we can see, we're actually doing better than, than just the antenna with no choke at the worst feed line line. But it's not as good as we could get. We're down, we are down to where we're only in the blue, so it's getting up to around here as opposed to way up here on the chart on the current distribution. But we can do better. Next, I'm going to show you a much smaller choke at an optimal location. Okay. Here we see the choke is in a different location, and over here, as we can see, I used a much smaller choke, 250 ohms of impedance. Uh, this is, with this choke, you would have to use 32 of these to equal the same impedance of the choke that we used at the feed point before. I'm doing this to make a point. Uh, as we can see with the results, we're still just in the blue, dark blue to light blue, although it's not as much light blue on this line. If we look over at the actual raw data from the file, 
we see we we're from 837 milliamps up to 929 milliamps on the antenna itself. On the feed line, we're from, at, we went from 309 milliamps down to 273 milliamps. So a much smaller choke at a much better location is actually giving us better results. Now this last one is a more likely scenario for someone who's actually using an air choke. It's simply this model with the with the 8,000 ohm choke as used above. <clears throat> now, as we can see with this, we're actually getting the best results of any of the models anywhere. Um, quarter wavelength away. And one thing you'll note to the left of the choke is we never really get any significant current forming. All of the current on this model is between the choke and the feed point. On the feed line of this model is between the choke and the feed point. Uh, we never get above 70 milliamps of current to the left of the choke. And as we can say, it, see it stays dark blue all the way through, showing 70 milliamps or less. All of the current on the choke is limited to this small portion right here. So, and while it's limited to this small portion, it's also lower peak than it is with any other setup. Plus, this model has the bonus of being the highest peak on the antenna itself. So, with this, it shows the best location is not necessarily the feed point. With this antenna design, you're much better putting the, the, the show about a quarter wavelength away from the feed point. Uh, that's pretty much all I had to say on this, this uh, matter. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask.